Hi guys, welcome to Craft Time. So um, today we are going to make a little critter. I made an owl. Um, I made a bunch of other stuff, but I'll, I'll wait to show you guys that. But um, this just uses a either a paper towel tube that's been cut in half or a toilet paper tube roll, um, which I'm sure that you guys have at home. Um, so what you'll need is this guy and something to color with. Today I'm gonna actually use paints. Um, if you, I, I don't own markers and so that's why I'm using paint because that's what I have. But if you have markers or I guess colored pencils or if you just wanna use a pen, um, that's fine too. So uh, other things that you'll need are a pair of scissors um, and your creative noodle, that's it. So um, this is mostly geared towards kids, but if you're an adult and you're watching and you're also gonna do this, I am X amount of years old and I still enjoyed making all of these and I actually got carried away. All I really needed to do was make this little owl. <laughs> but um, this shape that we'll be folding this tube into, you can make into a number of different critters. As long as it's got two pokey ears, you can make it into whatever you want. So I made a little fox and he's got a little tail. Um, I also made a goofy looking bat. I guess I'll show these a little bit closer so you guys can see them better. Um, here's that little fox again. <laughs> He's cute. Um, and then I also um, actually to create a couple of these, I had a paper towel tube and I cut it to size so that it would be about the same size as this guy. Um, and I was left with this little tiny bit and I was just on a creative roll. So I made a bear cub. He is super tiny. He's got a little tail. Um, and also since I work for the wildlife center, I gave him an orange ear tag because <laughs> that's how we tell our cubs apart um, at the wildlife center. So let's get started here. So I'm going to show you guys this guy that I made. Now um, we have pet mice and pet rats and I actually had to steal this from the mice and they had already chewed through the back but we can just ignore that little head wound um, and eventually what we'll end up with is this little guy. So we're gonna cut so that he has some wings and also so that he has a three-dimensional beak um, and we'll give him some eyes and these feather tufts which are called plumicorns on owls. Um, and I'll tell you guys some fun facts about owls, but not too many because this afternoon, Alex will be doing an owl program with um, our education ambassador, Bard Owl, named Gus. So I don't want to give away too much of that, but all right. So start with your naked tube. Now, because I'm using paint, I actually pre-painted my tube brown so that it wouldn't be wet while I was doing this stream. So to fold the top is very, very simple, but I have a couple of um, little pieces of advice for you guys before you start. So um, these little tubes are actually like wound, right? So they do have a little end and occasionally it sticks up. What I would encourage you to do is put your finger on that little part and fold it inwards. So what you're gonna do is just take that and then fold it down. And then for the other side, and you can make that nice and round so that it makes like a little U like that. And then for the other side, you're going to do the same thing directly across from it so that it folds just like this. Now, when you're making your critter, um, try to use the top folded part, right? The part that you, fold, that you folded second, make that face you. That way you are not, oh, I'm sorry, make that face you so that when you make your critter, he doesn't have a weird little headband at top. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So for my fox, when I folded this guy, see he has the little thing coming off, but that's no worries. So when I folded him, I made sure that the second fold was his face. Um, all right, so I've got my little owl right here so I can use him as reference. So what we're gonna do is get started. So what we're gonna do very first is make the wings. So you'll actually need to fold this ever so gently, 
and you're gonna take your scissors and watch first and then try yours because if you accidentally angle these in too much, you'll chop it in half or you'll cut something too big. So watch the first one with me and then you can do the second one. So the first one, I angle it up like this and I think about where I want my wing to end on the body. And then I'm also gonna think about where I want it to start on their body. That's where I'm gonna cut from and to and make sure that you're angling up toward your little plumicorns. So we're going to, whoopsies, cut. Do this slowly. If you're a kid at home and um, you're a little nervous about this, maybe ask mom or dad um, or an adult that's home with you. And then once you get that, you're gonna do a little bit of nifty action. Now, if this rips a little bit, no worries because mine ripped as well. If you guys can see that right here, but it made his wings stick out. So I don't really mind, but ever so gently, you're gonna stick your finger on the inside and you're gonna push out like this. Whoops, sorry guys, like that. Ta-da, and now you have a wing. So now that you guys have watched one, you can do the second one with me. Now, what I like to do is fold the other wing down and try to match that same place on the other side of my paper towel tube. Like that. Now, if your wings don't end up even, that's fine. My face isn't even. Owls aren't even. And I can tell you that because I've worked with owls. So no worries. Also, paper um, towels and toilet paper tubes are very inexpensive because they are for free. They usually would be garbage, right? So if you mess up one, just start over on a new one. No worries. All right, so we're gonna pop this guy out as well. Yay. Now, now that we've got two wings, <laughs> um, you'll notice that there's a little hole underneath. So his armpits are very airy. It's good for good <laughs> um, circulation or whatever, right? All right. So now let's make the beak. So the beak is formed the exact same way, except for I put mine, if you look at like the line that goes across of the wings, right? I just put it slightly above that because I want the beak to be on his face instead of on his body. Um, and so to do that, instead of pinching your tube this way, you are now going to pinch it this way. And we are going to, and remember which side is your face, right? It's the side that you folded second. So it's nice and flat and you don't have a weird headband. Um, all right, so we are going to cut a little beak. I'm gonna to try to do this and also show you guys. It might be complicated, but we can do it. All right, let's go. Moment of truth. That's a weird looking beak I just cut. Oh well. All right. So it's nice and long, sort of like a heron. By the way, you can make a different bird. If you don't want to make an owl, you want to make a heron, go for it. You want to make a hawk, you want to make a purple chicken. Do whatever you want. No worries. This is your project and it can look however you want it to look. So we've got our little beak. All right, now let's get to paint. So I'm gonna put my scissors over to the side and I have three paint brushes today. I've got a teeny tiny one for some um, details. I've got a bigger one and then I've got that big, huge fat one for some big broad strokes. So I think what I'm gonna start with is the eyes. So owls have something called a facial disc. So these big eyes, on an actual owl are created by feathers that are actually in a circular pattern around their eyes that actually helps to catch sound and funnel it to their really, really um, tuned ears. So what we're gonna do first is I've chosen like this mustard yellow color, but again, you can use whatever color you really want to. So let's pull out some paint, got my paint. It's called yellow okra, if you guys are curious really channeling my inner Bob Ross here. This is a dream come true for me. 
All right, so I've got my paint on my little paint palette, which is actually just a sheet of paper because we're using what we have, right? Being resourceful. All right, so when I'm painting this, I'm gonna try to paint and show you guys at the same time. This will probably be complicated, so bear with me. So I want my eyes to be here and here. So I'm gonna make those big circles. So one big circle, need some more paint. One big circle. Yay. And the second big circle. Now these circles should touch because like on a real owl's face, they do touch. And that's where we get that beautiful circular head that they have. Now I'm not painting any specific type of owl. I am just painting a very generic owl, but all owls have this facial disc, which is pretty cool. Gives them really good hearing. All right, so I'm gonna try to even these up. This is really hard to paint and show you guys at the same time. Let's try to even these guys up a little bit. And you guys will see that I'm not perfect. You don't have to be either. But that's what makes him a little individual, right? Makes him really fun. And you can give this to someone in your house or you can keep him for yourself. Maybe put him in your bathroom. All right, so we've got our two eye, um, our facial disc, right? We've got our facial disc. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna save a little bit of that for that color for his little feet. Um, so I will show you my owl. So his little tiny feet at the bottom are just basically three little bumps, like little baby mountains. So um, I'm gonna save this color for those at the end. Now, let's move on to his eyes. All right, so I'm gonna grab some white paint. If you're following along and you're trying to make it like mine, if you are making it differently, no worries. So we just need a little bit of white. And let's take that tiny detail paintbrush again. All right, are you ready? Now my paint is wet, so my white my, night, excuse me, might not be as white. It might end up a little bit yellow, but that's okay. Um, when I made my um, finished product guy, I actually used a hairdryer in between all of these um, layers because I am very impatient and I wanted him to be done now <laughs> instead of having to wait a long time. So a hairdryer is very, very handy. And because you're painting on paper, um, it dries very quickly. Um, like this is tacky already. So let's give him some eyeballs. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna center his eyes in the middle of those big circles that we just made. So let's put a white circle here. Now I am using paint that I bought on discount, so I don't think it's the best. And therefore it doesn't really color or fill that well. Um, so when I made my first one, I actually had to paint on a couple of layers. And if you wanna do that, and you just wanna like listen to this session um, or take notes, I don't know why you would need to take notes. This is pretty simple. But if you're a kid and you wanna make this again, you wanna make a bunch of them like I did, I got carried away. All right, so we've got that guy, rinse our little brush. Now for the black, I need like the smallest little piece of black for his pupils. So teeny tiny amount of black. So what I'm gonna do is instead of wasting paint and putting it on my little palette here, I am actually just going to dip my paintbrush into my paint tube like this. So I can pick up just a little bit of paint. So during this time, um, I'll tell you guys a little story while I'm painting on these pupils. So my mom and dad, Larry and Carol, shout out to them. 
um, are both actually classically trained artists. So when I grew up, arts and crafts were always just a little bit more sophisticated because instead of using Crayola paint, I used really nice like art school paint. Um, and uh, when I went to go buy paints, I was like, man, why aren't these as nice as I'm used to? And I realized it's because I am used to very expensive and fancy paints. Um, and I need to chill on my expectations of what paints look like for regular people. So unless you're a regular person and you like expensive paints, you can get down with that. I'm on board with that. All right, so now we've got our little eyes. So let's move on to our little belly here. So we're gonna paint this first and then I'll move on to the beak and then I'll come back for it because as you notice, I have to put some details on top of it and I want it to dry in the time that I'm working on the beak. So for that um, little section, I am going to use this um, big fat brush. You don't have to, you can use a smaller brush if you want. I just, I just like this one. So we're gonna pick out a lighter color than the body probably this lighter brown it's called burnt sienna i used to have a cat growing up named sienna i think she was named after this color she was very pretty she did not like me when i was a kid um she used to hiss at me and my parents used to ask me you know like what sound does a dog make what sound does a cat make and when they got to a cat i would hiss because that's what my cat did which fair i was a child and i probably terrorized her not on purpose, but because I was a baby. All right, let's paint. <laughs> this guy's beak is so crooked and funky. He looks like he's laughing. I kind of like it. All right, so what we're gonna do is paint a little arch on his belly. So let the, let's get that popping over here. Just a little patch to dictate where his body is and that it's not his face. And also so that we can put some pretty feather details on his body. There we go, little belly, perfect. All right, <clears throat> so, onto the beak. So for his beak color, I actually mixed something up because um, in my little paint set, I don't have that color. So um, this is sort of like a, I think I mixed these three colors together because I had extras of them. Um, so you can go for whatever color you want. I think that my beak to not, like today right now might be a little bit of a different color simply because um, I don't remember how to make that color. Oh well. So I'm gonna use my, oh, I just put my finger right on the belly that I just painted and guess what? It's already mostly dry <laughs> because painting on paper. All right, so let's mix up a little color here. If you guys are working with markers, you can just pick a different color. Let's go for something that's a little yellow, a little brown. Remember owls use their feathers and their coloration to blend into the trees that they live in, right? That's called camouflage. So you don't want to make any very bold colors if you're painting an owl to be realistic colors. If you're making your owl purple and pink and blue, maybe he lives in a purple, pink and blue forest. All right, so I'm just going to paint the top of my beak here. Let's see if I can paint by looking on my screen. Can't do that, not skilled enough, that's all right. Okay. Yay. He has a beak, that's great. Now he can eat, right? Owls eat um, just animals. They are what we call obligate carnivores, which means that they can't eat vegetables or fruit. Now, Alex is probably watching this and saying, Lauren, stop telling them all of these cool owl facts. I'm gonna have nothing left to say when I have Gus out. And let me assure you, Alex, that people will still be fascinated in what you have to say about Gus because she will be a live owl and not made of paper towel tube. So now we've painted my beak and my belly is, whoops, almost dry. <laughs> almost dry is dry enough. 
So we're going to take some white again. Take some more white and make these little belly stripes. And then if you notice the plumicorns at the top, which are those feather tufts that help to um, help owls to communicate by putting them up, they can tell them, um, tell other owls, I'm angry, stay away from me. It's sort of like an aggressive move. Um, and then they also can be put up for um, camouflage because it, it helps to obstruct their physical um, form, even though they're kind of like little orbs that sit in trees, little fluffy orbs. But anything helps, right? Because it's hard being a wild animal. So we're going to take some white and make three zigzags across their belly. So when you make your zigzags, try to make them one on top of each other with a little bit of spacing in between. So that's my first zigzag. I guess I'll paint up here. Two, three. You guys can tell that my example owl is much more neat. And that's because I took an embarrassingly long time to make him. All right, and our third little zigzag. If you wanna make more zigzags, if you wanna make polka dots, if you wanna make hearts, remember this is your project. Three ziggity zaggies. There we go. And my beak is not dry, but that's all right. We're winging it here, friends. Get my bird joke. <laughs> all right. So again, I need two very tiny little bits of black paint for the nares. Nares are what we call um, bird nostrils. So I'm going to take the tiniest bit of black paint. Teeny, teeny, tiny. Save my black paint. And on the top of his beak, we'll just make two side-by-side -side lines to mark his nose holes or his nares. One, two. And now he can breathe. Oh, he's really coming alive here, guys. There we go. All right, so I think now what I'd like to do is make his feet. So we're gonna go back to that yellow color, or again, whatever color you wanna use, and we're gonna make those three little bumps at the bottom for his little feetsies. Now for this, I'm probably also, um, I'm probably also going to paint on wet paint, but that's all right. So when I like to make these feet, I basically take my teeny tiny brush and I make three bloops right next to each other. So one, two, three. Now owls use their feet, which actually have four toes, but one is in the back. They use their feet and their toes to catch their prey. So we pick up a sandwich with our hands, right? And But for owls, their hands would be their wings and that would be kind of hard for them to pick things up with. So instead they use their little feeties. Now their little feeties are nothing to, um, nothing to mess with because they have very large talons at the bottom of their toes. And those talons are very sharp nails that they use to hold on to their prey. So we're not gonna paint the talons on today because this is a cute owl, not a murderous one. Check out those little feet at the bottom. So now he can catch food and he's got a face so he can eat and he's got a little mouth, yay. All right, so now we're essentially just gonna add some final details. So if you notice on my little pre-made owl, I put a lot of speckled paint around him. And I actually did not continue him onto the back. I had a lot of fun when I was making this fox because I realized that I should utilize the whole tube and I gave him a big fluffy tail. So if you'd like to put some stuff on the back, you're more than welcome to. You don't have to do exactly what I did. Um, 
but let's move on to that. So we're just gonna add some more camouflage to him. So he's looking pretty plain right now. Uh, but I think what I'm gonna use is the same color from my beak. Since I have that paint, why not just use it and don't waste it, right? All right, so let's make sure I have enough of this. I do. All right, so I'm gonna use my medium brush this time. And what I'm gonna do is put paint on my brush and then give it a swipe across my paper just to take some of that off. And then when I flutter it across my owl, it'll give it a nice effect. Like he has feathers and like they're all different colors. Like that. <clears throat> I find it helpful to hold him on the top and the bottom for this part. So we're just gonna go all the way around, not touching his belly, but all of the parts that are just dark brown to sort of embellish the rest of his feathers. I'm gonna do some on his wings and across the sides of his face. And if you mess it up and make one broad stroke like that, that's okay. All right, let's keep going on to the other side. Our owl is really looking great now. He's almost done too. All right, down those little wings. I keep <laughs> putting him down too low that you guys can't see him. That's not on purpose, friends. Sorry about that. Let's see. I think he looks pretty good. He also looks like he would blend in well to a forest. Now I'm going to put just a couple of strokes on his head. All right. What do you guys think? He looks pretty good, right? Look at his little wings. I'm not going to paint his back because I just don't feel like it right now. But if you want to paint his back, go for it. Owls are three-dimensional beings, right? So they do have backs. Now, the last touch on our little owl is to put some embellishments on his plumicorns, right? That is like the most fun word that I can teach anyone, honestly. I was gonna say kids, but adults really like that word too. So we're gonna clean our medium brush again. And pick up a little bit of white. Whoopsies, I just touched his wet foot. Doesn't look bad though. Uh, if you wanna paint and not get stuff on your hands, which I should have been doing this whole time, but I forgot, you can put your little fingies into the paper towel tube and then ta-da. All right, so we're gonna put these little embellishments of white on his plumicorns right at the top, like this. Oh, that's very white. He's a very expressive owl. Now, you guys could make a snowy owl so that everything is white and all of his accents are black. Uh, you could make a barred owl and make those beautiful bars across their middle. And barred owls are a little bit more gray. You could make a great horned owl, which would look a little bit similar to this. Let's put some color on those plumicorns since I overwhelmed them with white. There we go. And he's done. Look at that, guys. We made a paper towel critter. Now let's <clears throat> compare him to his little friend here. They look pretty good together. They're like little Earth Day best friends. One's taller than the other, just like friends in real life. <laughs> and they look a little bit different, but they're both good. Let's add them to their little tribe of critters. Let's line them up here, and then I'll tilt my camera down so that you guys can see them. You ready? Oh, that doesn't work. All right, well, let's put them on the fingies. Yay! Finger puppets! <laughs> Look at those guys. So cute. 
All right, guys. Well, if you're crafting with me, it is 1130. That is my time slot. But I hope that you enjoyed making a little owl. Maybe you guys will be inspired to make some other critters. Um, you can make dogs and cats, not just wild critters. You could make a tree. That would be really fun. Whatever you guys really are inspired to make. So thanks so much for joining me to make these little critters with me. Bye guys. <laughs>